Hey guys, on this video, we're going to take the TRX4 and we're going to remove and disassemble the center mounted two speed transmission that's included in this vehicle. In the previous video, I disassembled the front and rear axle, showing you all of the components that go into that. In this video, we're going to show what it takes to actually get to the center mounted transmission and then disassemble all of it and show you all of the components that lay inside. The first step to accessing the transmission is to remove the battery tray. There's one screw on each side and two screws in the middle. Then lift up the battery tray and rotate 90 degrees to separate it from the frame rails. Next, there's three screws that hold the motor cover and motor plate onto the center mounted transmission. Remove the bullet connectors from the stock motor and lift the motor and motor plate out of position. Here you can see that this thing doesn't pop off so easily in this form right here. More on that later. But once you do pry it off, you do get a look at the motor and the pinion mesh settings that you have. Since you can't clearly see the gear mesh in this, they have predefined the gear mesh with those series of holes. Here you can see some plastic on the end of my pinion. And what I found is that this pinion was actually rubbing that gear cover. More on that towards the end of this video and how to rectify that. Then we're going to remove two screws from the underside of the slider. This removes the ESC. We can move that out of the way. Now there is one screw on each side of the transmission that we need to remove to get that transmission to come loose, followed by the screw on the bottom of the skid plate. After removing the screw from the bottom of the skid plate, you will still need to remove the set pin holding the front drive shaft in place. Once the front drive shaft is removed, you will be able to lift that transmission out of place. The transmission will still be tethered to the vehicle, however, by the micro servo for the two speed. Removing the two screws from the side of the transmission will release that bracket from the transmission, allowing you to remove that servo by disconnecting the linkage to the two speed. Now we're going to remove the rear mounted drive shaft section. The slipper clutch is removed by one seven millimeter lock nut. The slipper system is made up of two steel discs, the spur gear itself, one washer, and five shims. Once that's removed, we can remove the three screws from the back of the transfer case, and this will allow us access to remove the back cover. Here you can see the front and rear outputs of that transfer case. With the transfer case removed, you now have access to the outputs. The rear output you can see has a shim behind it between the 5x11 bearing and that output gear. The gear is a slide fit onto that rear output shaft and is retained by a 2mm pin. The 2mm pin will just pull out and you can see that full assembly. The front output is longer than the rear. You can pull off that gear just like the front and it has another 2mm pin to attach the gear to that front output shaft. The top gear will fall off and you can remove the pin that drives it with a set of needle nose pliers. Once you have that removed, you can then remove the three screws from the back side of the transmission and the two from the front side near the front output to remove the rear side of the transmission case. You'll need to kind of hold the shift forked linkage when doing that so that you don't pull all the gears out all at once. This will help you see how everything went together. You can see the two output shafts. You can pull the transmission shift fork and the output shaft and remove that whole assembly at once. Here you can see how that shift fork rides on that shift collar. That shift collar is what engages either the high gear or the low gear. The low gear is the plastic gear that I'm spinning here. Both of these gears spin freely on that shaft. The low gear that you can see here is a nylon gear that has two 5 by 8 by 2.5 millimeter bearings. This is the high gear, and this gear is made up of two pieces, one piece that engages the drive dog and one that is the actual gear. This is the engagement drive dog. This rides on that shaft and you can see it has that keyed cross shape. We can pull out the input shaft of this. This is the shaft that's attached to the spur gear. The high gear is the gear that's just been pulled off here, which is a nylon gear. Low gear here is another nylon gear and just pulls off as well. That actually concludes the disassembly portion, but I also wanted to touch on that gear mesh situation. You can see here I'm overlaying the transmission and the motor plate once it's out of the car completely. This isn't how you would typically see it. But in this case, you can see that the stock pinion was only engaging about 50% 
of that stock spur and you can actually tell if you look very closely that there was a little bit of odd wear pattern shown on the factory spur. So in this I'm going to take the opportunity to loosen the pinion and slide it down a little bit on that motor shaft to get 100% engagement on there. This is something that I would stress to all of you to do out of the box just to ensure that you're getting complete engagement. That wraps up the removal and teardown of the center mounted transmission in this car. Altogether, this car is a well built and well designed rig, but there is a lot more to it than some of the other standard solid axle trail trucks. So if you've never worked on your own RC, this one's going to be a little bit more of a stretch than maybe one of the other options that's also in this genre. With everything put back together on this rig, I'm looking forward to hitting the trail with it and seeing exactly how it performs on the rocks. So thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for more coverage on this car and we'll see what else we have in store for it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next one.